So here we are on the sitemap generator page. So basically we just check all the things that we want to include in our sitemap. I'm going to say all categories and items. Um, all manufacturers. And uh, I don't want to worry, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to index the support pages right now. Okay, so you click on save. So basically it's generated a sitemap and it's put it into a gzipped format. There's also a uh, non-gzipped XML file in this location as well. So Google Webmaster Central is a powerful and unique service provided free to web content publishers. Simple to sign up. Just go to google.com slash webmasters. Once you have access, add your website to the list of sites to manage. It'll be done in a few different ways. Um, in this example, we're just going to place a file in the root of the website for verification. So the Webmaster program just needs to verify that you actually have ownership over the URL that you would like to include. And um, click on add a site, enter the full URL to the root of your e-commerce website. Um, I'm going to use oec.boomagma.com, which is one of our testing sites. Next, you'll be, pre be presented with options for verifying your site. Again, the simplest, easiest way is to download the file and place it in the root of the website. So I'm going to download the file to cinetpub www.root slash zsuite, and that is the folder location for oec.boomagma.com. So once you've verified the site, go back to the dashboard. So here's the dashboard for oec.boomagma.com, and you can see it's already done some indexing in the past. This is an example of uh, sort of after the, the process has, has taken place. And what we're going to do now is submit the sitemap that we generated. So we click on the menu on the left, click Configuration Sitemaps, then click on Submit a Sitemap, enter the URL as previously displayed in the admin. In this case, we link directly to the XML file and not the gzip, although either of them should work. You can see for oec.boomagma.com, using the exact same process I just demonstrated, there's a file called sitemap.xml in the assets directory. So the Google Webmaster site is going to continue to process that sitemap. And when it's finished, there'll be a green check mark to indicate it's been successfully processed and added to the website profile. So that's what it looks like when it's finished. You can see the green check mark here. I've got 64 URLs submitted, and 56 of them are in the web index. If there were any issues, you would see a different symbol here. And then clicking on the link for the sitemap, you'd be able to see any sort of errors. So after you've done that, then uh, Google will consider the pages included in the sitemap as part of your site and index them according to their rules for content. And then, of course, like I said, you can look at any errors. Uh, you can do this as often as you like. Um, you may wish to set up some sort of automated process or maybe some kind of a weekly reminder to generate a new sitemap. Uh, then you can do the, the resubmit whenever your content has changed quite a bit. Uh, keeping in mind, though, that the search engine crawler comes around, well, it's hard to say, but it's usually every three or four days. So Google Analytics, another free program, probably heard of it, web content publishers, and uh, provides incredible amounts of useful data. It's going to verify your site looking for the presence of a code snippet within the head tag of your website. And the default theme, New Basic, already had this content in a slot named Google Analytics. And all you need to do is replace the UA equals or the UA dash XXX with the number provided. So if you go back to our site and look at the New Basic theme slots, there's a slot here called Google Analytics. Click on Show HTML. You see here, this is basically the code snippet. And all you need to do is replace this here with the unique code given to you when you signed up to have your website included in the Google Analytics program. Okay, that's what I've done for oec.bluemagma.com. And once it's been verified, you get the status of a uh, check mark. And because it's in a slot, it's going to be used on every page. So, for instance, I'm going to go to the, the home page of b1ecommerce.com, right click, view page source, and here's our Google Analytics code. For that one item detail page. There it is again. 
I'll go to a category page. Here it is again. So if you put it into a theme slot, it's really simple to get it to be included, to have it included on every page of your website. Because as we know from how themes work, uh, all slots are used on all pages, unless explicitly defined to not display. And like I said, Google Analytics, very powerful tool. Um, working on a presentation that will show how to set up e-commerce goals and funnels so you can sort of monitor your conversion rates and funnels help you figure out where your shoppers are abandoning your checkout or getting lost on the site or basically not completing a particular function. So talking about the view state now, um, in 7.4 we've, we've compressed it. The ASP.NET view state is basically used by ASP.NET to uh, store information that browsers interaction with the user. So for instance, um, when you go to a page and you fill out some fields and instead of that page going back to the server, that data can be stored in a view state. And uh, it's supposed to make for faster browsing experience because it doesn't have to make a trip all the way back to the server. So, you know, sometimes field verification JavaScript or scripting can be stored in a view state. Um, the view state can get to be quite large and it's at the top of the page. So a search engine crawler, you know, these days is not as much of an issue probably, but before a search engine crawler would only index 500 K to maybe one meg of your site. And if most of that was view state, then that wouldn't be very useful content for them to have indexed. Let's take a look at the view state once. Go back to the page source. So this giant block of encrypted data is the form of the compressed view state. And basically in prior versions, this would be much, 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 much larger. So less data uh, to display to the browsers, less data for the pro browsers to process, uh, faster response times and faster page load times. Now it will incur some additional processing time on the processor of your web server. So if you want to turn it off because of that reason, that is also underneath setup config settings. Uh, that is under netpoint. And there's a compress view state checkbox. And that is all.